Let's consider an airplane flying in the wind. The airplane has an air speed of 300 kilometers per hour. That is, it can fly 300 kilometers per hour in still air. The average wind is going south at 50 kilometers per hour. Let's talk about some different scenarios here. What's the fastest ground speed available to this plane? That is, what's the fastest the plane can travel as viewed from someone standing on the ground below? Pause and decide how the fastest ground speed could be achieved. This fastest ground speed could be achieved by flying in the same direction as the wind. The vector diagram would include the plane speed and the speed of the air, head to tail, and the resultant vector would look like this. A total speed of 350 kilometers per hour. What about the slowest ground speed? While still maintaining that airspeed of 300 kilometers per hour, how could you do that? You can probably figure that one out in that we aim in the opposite direction, right against the wind. Now our vector diagram would look like this. The airspeed of the plane, then the speed of the air relative to the ground, or wind, in the opposite direction, and the resultant is now 250 kilometers per hour. So we've determined the two extremes. Depending on the direction of the plane, the resulting airspeed will vary, but will always be between 250 kilometers per hour, our minimum, and 350 kilometers per hour, our absolute maximum. So no matter which direction we end up traveling, we can always do a double check that our resulting airspeed must be between 250 and 350 kilometers per hour. The more we aim into the wind, the closer we'll be to 250 kilometers per hour. The more we aim with the wind, the closer we'll be to our 350 kilometer per hour maximum. Good to note. So, in every scenario considering this plane, we can consider two components of velocity. We can consider the north-south component and the west-east component. Let's call them Vx and Vy to align with our Cartesian coordinates. If the plane is heading north, we could say that the north-south component of the velocity is 250 kilometers per hour. As we change the angle, the west-east component of the velocity, or Vx, grows, and the Vy shrinks. If we are aimed at going straight east, Vy shrinks to zero, and our Vx component is at a maximum. The full airspeed of the plane is being used to get us east, so in this case, Vx would be 300 kilometers per hour. Thus, if you wanted to head for a border over here as fast as you could, not caring about where along the border you crossed, you would want your Vx component to be a maximum. Sure, you'd end up being dragged down south by the wind and cross the border down here somewhere, but your easterly motion would be a maximum. One last scenario, a more specific one. What if we were to fly from Penticton straight east to Nelson? What direction should we aim? Now the easiest way to determine this would be to draw a vector diagram. So we have our airspeed. Now how do we draw the airspeed vector? Well we know that we're going to have to aim into the wind a bit. An angle like this then the wind will push us south like this and well our resultant would be straight east where we want it to go. Remember that the resultant is our resulting velocity vector the actual direction that we're going to end up going. So in this case we're best designing a resulting vector that takes us in the direction we want to go straight east to Nelson. 
It's not going to be our maximum velocity, Vx, of 300 meters per second, as part of our velocity in this situation will be opposing the wind. But our goal is the resulting direction, heading straight east. Therefore, countering the wind is a bit of a requirement of our ultimate goal, even if we have to give up some of our ground speed to acquire this. A little math, and remember in this case, the resultant isn't our hypotenuse, and we determine our resulting velocity to be 296 kilometers per hour. So, why is the velocity lower than our airspeed? Well, again, part of our velocity is required to fight the wind. Just like if you were in a river, if you aim upstream a bit, you could get straight across to a dock on the opposite side. But you're going to be giving up some of your velocity, and you'll be going a little slower, as part of your effort is being used to fight the current. So, back to our airplane. If we were heading to the location north of Nelson, our airspeed would be less than 296 kilometers per hour, as we'd be fighting the wind even more. It would never get lower than 250 kilometers per hour, our lower limit, so it would have to be somewhere between 250 and 296, anywhere in this range. If we were heading to a location south of Nelson, our airspeed would be greater than 296, as the wind would aid in our overall speed. Heading south of Nelson, our airspeed would be between 296 and our maximum of 350 kilometers per hour, depending on our angle. In this tutorial, we simply toyed around with some scenarios relating to a plane flying in a wind. This is a very typical situation and one that pilots have to deal with on a daily basis. In these types of scenarios, we can easily determine the minimum and maximum ground speed of the plane based on the plane's airspeed and the wind speed. It's worth sorting these out as any other direction the plane aims will result in a ground speed between these two values. The direction you choose to aim your plane depends on your ultimate goal. Often, the goal is to fly to a particular location. Therefore, you'd set up a vector diagram where the resultant velocity is aimed directly at your target. It may not be the fastest speed to get there, but it'll lead you in the most direct route. If your goal, on the other hand, is not as much about a particular target, but involves more speed, say you wanted to head east as fast as possible, then you design a route where your easterly component of velocity, Vx, is a maximum. 